Three days after Michael Brown Jr. was killed, we had a major rally in this very church. We said that night, with his parents present, that we had little to no faith in the grand jury by the local district attorney. We said that night that we wanted the federal government to come in. That Sunday, we had a unity rally where thousands came and joined us. We repeated it, and all the way through the funeral where I eulogized it. Last night, the appearance by the district attorney made it clear to everyone why we had little faith in a state prosecution. I've been out involved in civil rights all my life. We have seen cases go ways that we felt were right and ways that we felt was wrong. I've never seen a prosecutor hold a press conference to discredit right. the victim. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Where he went out of his way to go point by point in discrediting Michael Brown Jr., who could not defend himself. How do you, in explaining why you are not indicting a man that killed, try and convict a young man for shoplifting they can't explain the tape, try to convict him for uh -huh. interfering in the police car when you don't hear his side of the story. Uh -huh. Have you ever heard a prosecutor yeah. go in a press conference to explain to the press why the one that did the killing is not going to trial, uh -huh. but the victim is guilty of several things that no one has established? To go further than that, he takes his time to methodically try and discredit the witnesses. Right, right. Witnesses that will still be needed going forward in the ongoing federal investigation and if there are civil proceedings. What is the purpose of Mr. McCullough trying to undermine the credibility of the witnesses, undermine the credibility of the victim? still has not explained to us how you have a man on the force that feels like he's a child up against Hulk Hogan. So what kind of training and policing do you do? And still has not explained the original altercation began over what in the first place and why he in turn fired the fatal shots. Let us not forget, the only one that makes a presentation in the grand jury is the prosecutor. Yep. There is no cross-examination. Right. So for him to talk about inconsistencies is unchallenged because there's no one representing the other side to come and cross-examine what he put up. What may sound inconsistent is only responding to what was asked. If there was two sides, then maybe some of the gaps would have been filled. But when you have the attitude of a prosecutor that feels it is his duty to go out of his way to try and discredit a young teenager that can't speak for himself, then America saw why we said from day one, the federal government needs to step in to protect the rights of Michael Brown That's Jr. Right. Right. and to protect the rights of the citizens. Right. It also was very strange to us that he lectured the media, mm -hmm. a media that he and others had no problem when you leaked the videotape <laughs> of Michael Brown. <laughs> In the, in the cigar store or in the convenience store, a media that you had no problem leaking all kind of favorable stuff for the prosecution, a media you had no problem leaking things for the officer. So it seems to me that he has had the use of the media 
then has a strange decision in a town that has been tense, in a town that has been forecast to have all kinds of problems, his solution is, let's announce it at night after dark. <laughs> let's make sure that all the kids are home, that all of the students are back for Thanksgiving break, and it's dark outside. And we're going to announce it, and then I'm going to get up in the dark and castigate the character of Michael Brown Jr. I think that it was irresponsible. I think that it was unnecessarily provocative. But I think it only cleared why many of us said, let's go to the federal government from the first place. He implied last night that the federal government and the state investigation ran hand in hand and ended last night. That is not the case. The Attorney General has released a statement saying the federal government investigation continues in the killing and in the review. Mm -hmm. And Mr. McCullough's statements last night uh, led others to believe differently. Let me be very clear that we were not surprised at what the outcome was. That's right. That's right. Certainly it is painful for the mother and father, certainly there'll be emotional reactions. I've never seen a case where there wasn't. You're dealing with their flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let the record be clear. You have broken our hearts, yeah. but you have not broken our backs. Yeah. We, yeah. we are going to continue to pursue justice. And this is not a Ferguson problem. There's a grand jury about a week or two away from deciding the chokehold case in New York. There's a 12-year-old that was just killed by police in Cleveland. This is a problem all over the country. Right now, 12 noon all over the country, people are marching and gathering in front of federal courthouses, National Action Network, NAACP, National Urban League, all of our members are coming out, empowerment uh, movement today other Saturday, we'll be all over the country. We will continue we will. to fight for a new level of accountability of policing in this country. Amen. Michael Brown will not be remembered for the ashes from buildings burned in Ferguson. He be, be remembered for new legislation and the upholding of law that protects citizens in the country. Let me also remind you, for over 100 days, young people, older people, people of all races marched and rallied in this city. And they did it peacefully and nonviolently. Yes, those that got Violent last night, those that acted in a destructive manner does not represent the spirit of Michael Brown. It was those young people, those old people that stood no matter what the weather for over 103 days that kept going. Those are the ones that have stood for Michael Brown. They are on Brown's side. Those that burn are on their own side. If you're on Michael Brown's side, you walk with dignity. If you're on Michael Brown's side, you stand up with pride and call to uphold the law. If you do anything to harm others, you're on your own side. You're not on Brown's side. We are on the side of Michael Brown to fight for what is right. Don't lower those standards. In, in that light, we also question how you have grand juries now that are trial juries. The use of a grand jury is to find out if there is probable cause to go to trial. You do not have a grand jury to decide on the guilt or innocence of the accused. You only decide, is there enough to go for? You have a deceased body, 
this person did it, their accusations, he contradicts them, it goes to trial. Right. The fact that last night the prosecutor was not announcing whether there was probable cause, he was announcing the acquittal of the officer because he tried him rather than investigate him. And that is a miscarriage and a misuse of the grand jury system. Let's be real clear what we saw. We also, in that light, Mark Morial of National Urban League was present. Cornell Brook, Dr. Brooks, president of NAACP, Melanie Campbell of Black Leadership Roundtable Women, and Pamela Mays of the National Bar Association, and I have called an emergency civil rights leadership meeting in Washington, D.C. next week. In that meeting, Reverend Jamal Bryant, Empowerment Temple, in that meeting, we will determine a ongoing strategy that will include mass and regular marches, legislation, and economic boycotts. We will not turn around. We want you to know that we will have the leading activists, civil rights activists, including some of our young groups that want room on the platform that have shown the ability to mobilize. This is not about all of us liking each other. This is about all of us being bonded with a common goal. And we will come out of that summit and lay out a plan that will constructively help to change this nation and bear on those ongoing cases. Because we just had another case in New York over the weekend in a public housing uh, of a stairwell. Michael Brown has lit a new energy yes. for police accountability. I remember when Rodney King happened. Mm -hmm. Our hearts were broken when we went to Simi Valley and watched a trial jury acquit those police. There was violence after that, but we kept on going. And the federal government came in and those policemen were convicted. So before you think this is over, remember, remember what happened in Rodney King. We went from Simi Valley to the federal government. This will not end in the valley here. We're going to keep on going. We have told this family we're with them to the end. And we've told them we're going to do it with dignity. And we told them we were going to do it unfinished to cause. That is why we're here today to let Michael Brown Sr. and Liz know that we may have lost one round, but the fight is not over. And Brother Shaheed and Brother Akbar, any time you watch a fight, sometimes you can even get knocked down in a round. But I've seen champions get up off the mat and still win the fight. We took a blow last night, but that's all right. We've gone to the corner and cleared our heads. We come out for the next round.